good happy Thursday evening, October 22nd, 2020. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this Thursday evening edition of The News with Riley King. We have a lot of news to get to this Thursday evening, so let's begin. And also, it is a busy evening here at the Riley King Network. We have two specials we are bringing you this evening. One around 6.30, 6.40pm-ish, and the other one will be around 8pm. Be sure to see those two specials this evening on the Riley King Network. Let's begin this evening edition of the news with Riley King. First up, the final 2020 presidential debate is tonight. Let's take a look at this promo from MSNBC News. The moderator of tonight's debate is Kristen Wilker, Walker from MSNBC News. Their first debate produced fireworks. Everything he's saying so far is simply a lie. There's nothing smart about you, Joe. Their second debate was canceled after a White House COVID outbreak. Now, NBC News' Kristen Welker will ask the questions. In the candidate's last scheduled face-off before Election Day, our team will help bring clarity to a night that could reshape the race. This is 2020, and no previous rules apply. Coverage of the next and final presidential debate, Thursday at 8 on MSNBC. Okay, and there you go. The next debate tonight. What to expect from Trump and Biden's final presidential debate? Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent, that's Major Garrett. Major Garrett, good morning to you. We're down to the doing? final stretch. Yep. Have you heard of a focused closing argument from the president on what he intends to do with second term? We, I know we've heard a lot of attacks. We've heard a lot of name, right. ca name calling. Can you help us understand the strategy here? There is one that is forming, and you heard a little bit of it in that response to Leslie Stahl. The president saying, I want America to get back to a normal life. Gail, I can tell you this, for the last six to eight weeks, pollsters and strategists with the Trump re-election campaign have begged the president to talk in these terms. That if you re-elect me, America, I'll get you back to your normal life. The president essentially set all of that advice aside until this week, where a couple of people he's very, very familiar with, Dave Bossie, his deputy campaign manager from 2016, Corey Lewandowski, his first campaign manager back in 2015 and 2016, were brought back much more aggressively into the campaign nexus. And they sat the president down and said, you've got to talk about two things, getting America back to normal and that Joe Biden and his agenda will kill the American dream. You're beginning to see the formation of that closing argument, but it's awfully late in the campaign and the president's wasted a lot of time ignoring the advice he could have taken weeks before. Following up on Nora's interview with Joe Biden there, he does seem to appear to be leaving the door open to adding more justices to the Supreme Court. Do voters care about this issue, Major? Not really. Uh, Republicans tell me all the polling data they see doesn't really move the needle very much. They thought it would, but it doesn't. But here's the real important part of what the former vice president said. A commission. In Washington, that means you're punting. That means you're setting it off. For Democrats, the key issue is electing Joe Biden, not only that, but winning a Senate Democratic majority and changing the rules. So if anything happens at the Supreme Court with Roe versus Wade, same-sex marriage, or the Affordable Care Act with 51 votes in a democratically controlled Senate, you can change the law and fix whatever the Supreme Court overrules. That is where the minds and the strategic impulse and imperative of Senate Democrats and everyone in the Democratic Party is right now. Not enlarging the court, winning the Senate, winning the presidency. Big debate tonight. The conventional thinking is that most people have already made up their minds. But I'm wondering, with the undecided voters, is this race, and I know you know people on both sides, mm -hmm. is this race closer than it appears to be? Certainly the Trump people believe that it is. They discount every pollster except their own. And they believe that there is a hidden, shy Trump vote of worth anywhere between two points to four points, depending on the battleground state, that's simply not detected, and they know where it is, and nobody else does. 
but they also do not expect, as every analyst I've talked to does, record turnout of 150 million, 155 million. If turnout is that much bigger, the big problem for the Trump campaign is can you find all those new voters? Democrats believe they can. The Trump campaign believes possibly it can, but they may not have as many voters as they assume the polls are not detected. All right, Major, thank you very much. CBS News will bring you tonight's final presidential debate with live primetime coverage starting at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, right here on CBS. Okay, and there you go. COVID cases surge in smaller towns. CDC read it finds close contact. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. latest in the coronavirus emergency, at least 40 states reporting an increase in cases, and the CDC is redefining what close contact means for the spread of the coronavirus. Our chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, has the very latest. You're watching yet another patient being wheeled through one of the nation's busiest ICU wards. Its capacity, 24 beds. We probably are averaging on any given day somewhere between 28 to 32 ICU patients. ABC News got a tour at the Billings Clinic Hospital ICU in Montana where they've converted offices into hospital rooms and started doubling up on patients. We help people in the operating room until we could get a room open for their wow. care here. We're taking care of them on the cardiovascular unit. There are literally COVID patients all over the hospital. There are COVID patients all over the hospital, yes, correct. COVID has made a hard landing in so-called flyover country. In North Dakota, just 11% of hospital beds available. Researchers at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia forecasting a continued deteriorating situation throughout the mountain states and Midwest that is if distancing and mask wearing does not improve. I want to remind everyone, mask up, Illinois. The governor of Illinois shutting down indoor dining at restaurants and bars in some Chicago suburbs. In Wisconsin today, a new record, 48 deaths, and in Ohio, another record, more than 2,300 cases in a single day, hospitalizations climbing in 40 states. In Boston, following a surge in the positivity rate, the school district again putting plans on hold to ramp up in-person learning after nearly six of every 100 tested persons tested positive. I don't know what my old schools look like. But in places like Montana, bars and restaurants were humming Wednesday night. No social distancing. And here in Billings, it's up to Barbara Schneeman to write a press release for each COVID death, though she never knows their names. Every time I write a press release, I think, oh my gosh, am I going to be writing the press release that says a woman in her 70s, and it's my mother who, who's passed away. So the CDC has changed its definition of what close contact means. Previously, it said that if you spent 15 consecutive minutes with someone who had a confirmed coronavirus case, you were at risk. Now they're saying it's 15 cumulative minutes over a 24-hour period, meaning you don't have to just sit next to someone all day in the office. You can just pass them by in the hallway multiple times a day and be at risk, unless, of course, you're wearing a mask. Michael. All right. Thank you so much for that, Matt. Okay. And there you go on that video and that report. Airlines test effectiveness of cleaning and disaffecting routines. Let's take a listen to that video from NBC News. Aboard an empty 737, researchers in full protective gear spread live virus droplets on high-touch surfaces. From the seats and seat backs to tray tables, the galley, lavatory, and cockpit. The surrogate virus is MS2, not harmful to humans, but more difficult to kill than COVID. This is really first of its kind, is to show that we can kill the virus effectively using the tools and techniques we've provided in the actual airline environment on board. Researchers tested the same products airlines already use, applying chemical disinfectants using an electrostatic sprayer, a UV light wand, and an antimicrobial coating. University of Arizona virology professor Charles Gerba led the study. The results? 
all four airline techniques worked on their own, killing the virus and making the plane virus-free. How safe but should people feel traveling today? Using the, the even the products that are available today with True Value, it, it, it is safe, but they're going to be better because we proved it. You know, my confidence is based on proving that it really works in a real plane, and we have that. With passenger volume still down 65% and tens of thousands of employees furloughed, airlines have been trying to reassure passengers the risk of contracting COVID while flying is very low, insisting the airflow inside a plane washes out airborne particles, including viruses, sucking the air through HEPA filters similar to those used in operating rooms, removing more than 99% of particles. On board air, it's constantly mixed with fresh outside air. Military research partnered with United Airlines conducting 300 tests on mannequins, masked and unmasked. Each test released 180 million air particles, equivalent to thousands of coughs. With masks on, fewer than 1% of the particles actually made their way into another passenger's breathing zone. 99.97% were filtered out of the cabin within just six minutes. But infectious disease experts remain cautious. Environmental cleanup is absolutely important, and I'm very glad the airlines are doing it. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't take our own personal responsibilities. We still need to use our facial coverings to protect ourselves and others. Tom, it's so fascinating to see that. And there's also some research about the effectiveness on masks on planes. Yeah, that's right. This is coming from a new research that's out from the Journal of Travel Medicine. And they said that since airlines started uh, requiring masks, there have been zero super spreader events. And they specifically looked at people who were flying on flights between Dubai and Hong Kong. That's an eight-hour flight. They looked at a three-week period. They know of 59 people who actually were positive for COVID, but there were no other passengers. None of the other 2,000 passengers got sick and everybody was wearing a mask. By the way, one other note, Southwest Airlines, moments ago making an announcement, come December 1st, Southwest Airlines will start selling the middle seat, guys. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And let's see how that U.S. stock market did for this Thursday. And here's a check of your U.S. stock market. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green went up. Your NASDAQ closed in the green went up. S&P 500 closed in the green went up. Gold closed in the green went up. Oil closed flat. U.S. 10-year closed flat. Euro slash USD closed in the green went up. And VIX closed in the green and closed in the red. It went down. Sorry about that. Stock features rise slightly as traders monitor sentiment talks and debate ahead. Stock features rose on Thursday night as Wall Street weighed the potential for additional fiscal sentiment in news on earnings and coronavirus treatment fronts while awaiting the final U.S. presidential debate. And that is it for this evening edition of the news with Riley King. Thank you for watching the news with Riley King. Have a great rest of your evening and see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the news with Riley King. Good night and goodbye everyone.